In this tutorial, we will explore the implementation of a straightforward retirement model. The focus will be on three key aspects. First, estimating yearly spending from the present to the anticipated end of life. Second, estimating retirement savings. And third, determining the potential retirement age. It is important to note that this model is based on assumptions that you can adjust to suit your specific needs. Additionally, it's crucial to acknowledge that I am not a financial expert, and for more detailed information, consulting a retirement expert is recommended. Let's start by estimating our expenses. The spreadsheet designated for this project is provided below. You can access and download it via the link available in the description. With this spreadsheet, you'll be able to construct a personalized retirement model. To ensure flexibility and the option to revert to the original in case of errors, I will initiate by creating a duplicate of this sheet. Within this context, we have several distinct tables serving specific purposes. The initial table in blue will function as a model for our expenses, aiding in the calculation of the required savings to retire in a particular year. Moving on, the second table in purple is dedicated to determining our retirement savings. The earliest age at which our savings exceed the retirement needs will signify the minimum age for retirement. The third table in red encompasses various assumed variables like life expectancy, inflation, and interest rates. Lastly, the fourth table in green is designed for estimating our annual expenses. Our initial inquiry revolves around determining the age at which we commence saving for retirement and the projected duration of our life. To address this, we have provided an actuarial life table from Social Security in the life expectancy link. To interpret this table, focus on the first column displaying age, categorized by male and female. The life expectancy at a given age is the average number of remaining years expected before a person's death. For instance, a 25-year-old male is anticipated to live an additional 50.39 years, reaching a total of 75 years. In comparison, a female of the same age is expected to live an average of 55.58 more years, reaching 80 years. It's important to note that these figures represent averages, meaning some individuals may live longer while others may not. Returning to our spreadsheet, it becomes evident that we need to include the current age and life expectancy. I will assume that the individual we're modeling is presently 25 years old and intends to model their life until the age of 90. In the event they live less than 90 years, surplus funds will be available for their survivors. Should they live exactly until 90, all their funds will be spent in the final year. However, if they surpass 90 years, there won't be any remaining savings. It's crucial to exercise caution regarding this assumption. Having determined both our current and anticipated life expectancy, let's complete the initial age column. Let's temporarily hide the purple columns. Employing the sequence function, each row will represent an age, calculated by subtracting the current age from the life expectancy and adding 1. We will have one column, our starting point is our present age, and we increment by one year. The resulting values span from 25 to 90, each representing a year. While this example depicts an annual modeling approach, you have the flexibility to model by month or any preferred time interval. Now let's determine our annual expenses, focusing on the last table highlighted in green. If you are already aware of your yearly expenditures, you can simply input the total in the last row. However, if uncertainties exist, refer to this table or a modified version for estimation. It's important to note 
that certain items may not be applicable to everyone, and there might be omissions such as childcare expenses. For instance, if you know your current annual rent or mortgage expense is $20,000 a year, input this value into the respective row. While I'll provide the values from my model as an example, feel free to customize them based on your circumstances. Estimating taxes can be intricate due to variables such as income level, deductions, and state of residence. Make an assumption regarding your effective tax rate. For instance, I'll use $6,500. The buffer is a provision for those who prefer a lifestyle with more disposable income than their current expenses, say an additional $2,000 per year. In the total row, sum up all these values. For instance, if your estimated spending for this year is $53,000 and you plan to maintain this expenditure annually adjusted for inflation throughout your life, you should feel financially comfortable. It's crucial to recognize that this approach may not universally apply, serving merely as a foundational point. Additionally, please note that this list does not incorporate funds designated for retirement contributions. Next on our agenda is calculating the annual expenditure required. We will focus on the initial table. At the starting age of 25, our yearly expense is $53,000. However, for the subsequent years, it's crucial to augment this value to account for inflation. Clicking on the inflation link directs us to a website displaying the inflation rates for recent years. Examining historical data reveals that these values can range from as high as 13% to as low as negative 0.36%. While these rates fluctuate annually, a commonly used guideline is to consider a 3% inflation rate which will incorporate into the spreadsheet. It is essential to recognize that this is an assumption. Once we know the inflation rate, we can calculate our expenses for the second year by multiplying the previous year's expenses by 1 plus the inflation rate, utilizing an absolute reference. This calculation can be copied throughout the spreadsheet. This projection indicates that if we adhere to our current expenditure pattern, $53,000 will be equivalent to $361,000 by the time we reach 90 years old. As an alternative reference, we can achieve the same results using the FV function for future value. In this case, set the interest rate as an absolute reference, the number of periods as the age minus our current age as an absolute reference, the payment as $0, and the present value as the negative of $53,000 using an absolute reference. When copying this formula to the bottom, we obtain identical results. I will proceed to remove these values now. Now let's consider potential adjustments. For instance, in a few years, you might plan on making $3,000 annual payments for a car over five years, or anticipate paying off $1,500 student loan, eliminating that expense. The total yearly expenses will be the sum of the preceding two columns, and this calculation can be extended downwards. At this point, I will remove the adjustment values and hide certain columns. Now let's determine the amount of money needed for retirement. If we sum up all our total yearly expenses, the total surpasses $10 million. Having the sum presently would allow us to retire immediately without the necessity of investing the money. It implies that having this amount stashed away would suffice for a retirement without additional investment strategies. Nonetheless, there's the possibility of having less than $10 million and strategically investing it to accrue interest annually. Various investments avenues exist, such as a bank saving account, the stock market, real estate, and more. 
The next consideration revolves around the assumption of the potential returns from such investments. This figure is contingent on numerous factors, including risks and market dynamics. Here is a link to the S&P 500, a stock market index. The accompanying chart displays historical annual returns with a wide range of returns. The table provides a breakdown of these annual returns with the high, low, and medium values summarized at the bottom. In this model, I've chosen to use a 7% annual rate of return. However, feel free to adjust the figures based on your preference for a more conservative or aggressive approach. To calculate the retirement fund, we initiate with $0 at the age of 90. At age 89, the required amount for that year is the sum of the subsequent amount and the amount needed for that year divided by 1 plus the interest rate as an absolute reference, resulting in $338,000. To illustrate further, if these $338,000 grow by 7%, basically by multiplying by 1 0.07, it would yield the $361,000 necessary to cover the expenses of the last year. Extending this logic upward, we find that at the age of 88, $644,000 are needed to cover the next two years, assuming a 7% annual growth in the investment. This process can be copied up to the top. In simpler terms, if we were to possess $1.2 million today, which is considerably less than the $10 million required without investing, we could invest it at 7% interest rate per year. By withdrawing the necessary expense amount annually, we would eventually deplete the fund, reaching $0 at the end of the specified period. This is known as a growing annuity. To validate this approach, starting at the 25-year-old row, we increase our investments by 7%, then subtract our annual expenses. Copying this calculation down, we observe that we are precisely left with $0 at the age of 90. Let's proceed to delete the column. The chart on the right illustrates the amount required for retirement for each given year. Ideally, having this specified amount of money in any of the years indicates that retirement is feasible in that year. In summary, this video has outlined a straightforward approach to estimate annual expenses and project their adjustments with inflation over time. We've also calculated the necessary funds for retirement, whether kept as savings or invested with an annual interest rate. In our upcoming video, we'll investigate strategies for savings, discussing annual contributions, and the benefits of investing with compound growth. If you find this information beneficial, consider subscribing to the channel for more valuable content.